there's been no long-term research uh, on the concept or consequences of what this genetic modification does, not just to us, but to the environment. And right now, from all the research that's showing up, it says this has a very negative and profound effect on destroying the environment in which we live. So therefore, I find it senseless that the government would support and condone genetically modified foods without even having the basic research to understand the liabilities involved in creating these monster organisms and putting them into our world. The conversation in Europe and in countries in South America and in Asia is much more sophisticated in terms of its understanding of science, the importance of independent peer-reviewed science that isn't contaminated or corrupted by corporate influence. Here in the United States, you know, the birthplace, the bedrock of the free market system and democracy, we are having our rights corrupted by corporate influence. Uh, the major uh, impact that uh, Monsanto has, their ability to get their products approved with minimal uh, scientific oversight and minimal review of these products for human health testing is really an abomination. The entire scientific foundation underneath genetically modified organisms is false because organisms are not genetically determined. And when we understand that, we recognize that the only way to create crops that will benefit humanity is to understand nature herself and learn to live in harmony with it. And this is a completely different approach than humans have had for the last couple hundred years where we always thought, oh, humans' job was to control and dominate nature. In that process, we are now leading the world into the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. Five times in the history of this planet, life essentially got wiped out and started all over again. The five previous mass extinctions are attributed to things like comets or asteroids hitting the Earth and destroying the environment. We are now deep into the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. We are losing species of organisms faster than even in the previous five mass extinctions. But the source of the problem is much closer to home than a comet or an asteroid. Science has recognized that it's human behavior that is undermining the web of life. Rather than trying to control nature, our mission is actually how to learn to live in harmony with nature. The FDA, which treats the American people as slaves, knows that if people knew the truth about how healing their foods can be and how dangerous the processed foods really are with all their chemical contaminants and their genetic modification, if people knew the truth, they would demand food freedom. They would demand access to healing herbal therapies and healing dietary supplements. They would demand that the FDA back down from its intimidation campaigns that have been le leveled against producers of dietary supplements and herbal remedies and raw dairy products and so on. The people would demand that if they knew, and that is why they are kept ignorant under this campaign of disinformation currently being waged by the FDA. Scientists take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. Now the process itself creates massive collateral damage in the plant or animal, but they don't test for those changes and the side effects before they introduce, say, the crop into our food supply. DNA is the inherited material of life, and it is where genes are structured. So we inherit half of our DNA from our mothers and half of our DNA from our fathers. And within the DNA are the genes that encode for all the structures of the body. So the DNA is like a blueprint. Just like an architect has a blueprint for a building, the DNA is the blueprint for the, all the structures of the body. So when the, a gene is switched on to function, the information within that gene is being used to manufacture a protein. And that protein is then builds the structure of the body. And then proteins in the form of enzymes carry out all of the chemical reactions of the body that constitute the, the living organism. When the GM gene is introduced into the plant, the 
en genetic engineer has no control over where the GM gene integrates or splices into the DNA of the plant. And the effect of this is that the GM transformation process as a whole actually is very disruptive on the DNA structure and function of the organism. As a result, very unpredictable and potentially hazardous outcomes. Because if you disturb the balance of gene function, remember the gene function is controlling the structure and the biochemistry of the organism. If you disrupt the balance of gene function, you disrupt the biochemistry. And if you disrupt the biochemistry, you run the risks of creating novel toxins, novel allergies, as well as a disturbance to nutritional value. These types of outcomes resulting from the disruptive effect of the GM transformation process have been observed, are observable, and they're genuine. With our understanding of epigenetics, the new science of how environmental signals control our genes, we're introduced into the chemistry of where do the signals come from that select the genes and modify our genetic activity. Well, we used to say everything was due to the genes, but now we find there's a class of molecules called microRNA. They're very small RNA molecules, and they're found in all the cells. And these microRNA molecules are molecules that adjust the reading of our genes. And well, a new understanding has been found about the microRNA molecules. And when we eat food, the microRNA from the food is picked up by the digestive system and not broken down. The microRNA is taken into our own body intact. And now what they followed is the microRNA from food ends up in our own cells, like in our liver and other cells in our body. And these microRNAs still have the same function. They change our genetics and they change our readout of our, our genome. And the significance is profound. It says when you eat genetically modified foods, we are eating a new class of microRNAs that have never really been in the world before. And yet these microRNAs are picked up by our biology and adjust our own genetics. So in a sense, the old story, we are what we eat, actually now has a biochemical foundation. And then all of a sudden it says, if that's true, then why would you risk your life eating a genetically modified food containing microRNAs that can totally distort our own biology and cause great problems in our lives? these GMOs. If Monsanto's patent on a gene, that if that patent on a gene gets into any, and I'll use the term, higher life form. So what does that mean? Birds, bees, animals, and the question I have to ask, what about human life? If, they, if Monsanto's patent gene gets into you, gets into me, does that say they own me? Do they own you? These are all questions that are very, that the courts and our governments will have to be, have to address how far does the patents on genes on life go. There have been uh, over 140 lawsuits filed by Monsanto against farmers, uh, including against those farmers who wanted nothing to do with Monsanto's genetically modified seed. When you ask Monsanto whether genetically modified seed is natural, they have two answers, yes and no. And it depends on which side of Washington, D.C. they're talking. If they're at the FDA or the USDA, they say genetically modified seed is absolutely no different than natural food. It doesn't need to be tested, doesn't need to be labeled. The public doesn't need to know if their food's been genetically modified because it's no different. Then we're on, when they're on the other side of Washington, D.C. at the patent office, and the patent office is saying, well, you don't deserve a patent because your seed is no different than natural food. They say, oh, no, it's not. It's completely different. We've invented something brand new. It's radically different, and it's so inventive, we deserve not just one patent. We deserve entire portfolios of dozens and dozens of patents. Because the United States was the only country in the world, still is, that allowed genetically modified organisms or any organisms to be patented. Up until then, living organisms or their products could not be patented. So the patent for insulin, genetically modified insulin, produced in the E. coli bacteria, was given to Eli Lilly. Monsanto 
got it for RBGH, the bovine growth hormone. I have a book called Corrupt to the Core. In that book, I describe by quoting from a published speech by a Monsanto executive saying how they're going to control the whole world, not just by genetic modification, but they're going to take charge of the whole, con whole world by influencing the White House, the White Hall, the French Parliament, and Canadian Parliament, and the Japanese Parliament. This is published information. How are they going to control the whole world? Big agricultural and chemical companies don't want to label GMOs. What these corporations say is that labeling GMOs will increase our food bills. What I say is if they're so concerned about our bills, then they need to focus on a bigger price tag, and that's our health care costs. And we're not just talking about the cost of medications here. How about the cost of missed work and lost productivity when parents have to rush their child to the emergency room or to a doctor's office? And for the children, how about the missed school and summer camp? We're talking about the emotional and societal cost played out over and over again, hundreds of thousands and millions of times over. beautiful planet. In most Native American cultures, their, their beliefs or their concepts were based on, will this last for seven generations? Whereas we're asking, what can get me through this year economically? One year, 12 months. That's one of our greatest problems right now, is to leap over that barrier, that mentality. Globalization has happened. It's here. But the, its effects have to be reversed. Globalization in a good way, where people learn about each other, people learn about each other's religions, to tolerate each other's spirituality, work together, work in nature, work with God. Because it's time for us to re-empower our lives.